have seen in the previous sessions of transformers and in, in the machine case also that uh, the balloting operation of different type of equipments that is the transformer also that is the DC machines also the balloting operation of your uh, induction machine also induction generators all that and in the case of synchronous machines the generator are also, which are also called as the alternator are also synchronized or also uh, works on a parallel is the same reason that it is economical uh, to have uh, the, the, suppose uh, uh, the requirement of some base is 50 kVA so rather than putting a 50 kVA transformer or uh, synchronous machine or uh, alternator uh, there we can have uh, two or three different type of uh, different KVA rating such that the, the total requirement that is the 50 KVA of the customer or the place is uh, fulfilled. Uh, it is reliable in, in the sense that in the, the three different machines or four different machines will be uh, giving the same power but once if, even if the uh, single uh, unit goes faulty then there will be a very less uh, you know, total uh, output power uh, factor. Otherwise, if the 50 kVA transformer uh, or 50 kVA synchronous machine is directly connected and it goes faulty, then the whole power uh, system will go faulty. So rather than having a single, uh, rather than having a single uh, unit, you can have a different type of unit so that uh, they work in parallel. Another thing is that it is also economical to use. Uh, more number of uh, machines rather than using the single machine. It costs a lot, first of all, and secondly, it is reliable to use as many as machines we can use. So, uh, in the case of synchronous machine, also there is a thing which is called a synchronizing procedure. <coughs> we can have a look on the synchronizing procedure. Synchronizing processor is the process uh, by which we are actually synchronizing our incoming alternator to the bus bar or to the different type of uh, generators or the alternator working in parallel. So, first condition which is uh, uh, which should be fulfilled in the synchronizing processor is that the voltage. The voltage of the generator must be equal to the bus bar or the generators working in parallel. So the voltage of the incoming generator should be equal. <coughs> equal to the bus bar. The second thing comes is the frequency. The frequency of the generator must be equal to the that of the bus bar because of the reason that if the, there is a change in the frequency of the incoming generator then there may be a circulating current and uh, the, uh, there will be a problem with the synchronizing procedure. So the frequency of the incoming generator should be equal to the bus bar. The third thing which is very important is called the phase sequence. The phase sequence of the incoming generator must be equal to the or must be same as that of the bus bar. So this is these three points are very much important. So, things which are very much important in synchronizing procedure is the voltage first of all, the voltage should be equal. Secondly, the frequency of the incoming 
uh, generator should be equal to the bus bar. And the third thing is the phase sequence of the generator, incoming generator should be equal to or should be as same as that of the bus bar. At the instant of the synchronizing, the voltage phasor of the generator and the bus bar must be must coincide. Otherwise, the synchronizing procedure will not happen. We will continue the synchronous machine with another um, very important phenomena of the machine that is the synchronizing power. Since uh, it is universally known that the synchronous machine is runs on the speed of synchronous or the uh, magnetic field on which uh, the three phase magnetic field is rotating at the same speed as rotor moves. So it is always is in the synchronism only. <coughs> Somehow if uh, there is a disturbance, sudden disturbance in the machine, then uh, may be possible that the rotor accelerates and the load angle increases. At that time, what happens? Uh, due to the load angle increase, the uh, current which will be flowing will, be, uh, will try to come back to its original position because of the reason that um, the power which is actually coming from the rotor will be getting converted into the acceleration power uh, which is due to the fact that the motor, rotor has accelerated more and that power is used and the, since the rotor energy has been extracted at that point the rotor will try to come back on its original position and will continue to run in synchronism. So that is the way the synchronous machine <coughs> works. <coughs> So we can have a thing called the synchronizing power. It is actually the power which is uh, defined as the power per electrical radians and for the rotor, rotor displacement. So we can have the formula for the power synchronizing power as V S is equals to del P upon del D delta. Sorry, this is partial fraction. You can write this thing like this, <coughs> which is equal to 3 into EF into V upon excess into cos delta. By this formula, we can conclude that uh, at when the load is zero and uh, when the no load is there, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> when the no load is there, then the delta would be zero and the synchronizing power will be maximum. So, for del is equal to zero. For delta is equal to zero, the synchronizing power will be maximum. And for delta is equal to 90 degree, <coughs> the synchronizing power would be zero. That means <coughs> after delta is equal to 90 degree, the synchronism is lost. And at delta is equal to 90 degree, the synchronizing power is zero, and at that time it is on the verge of instability. So, delta, as we know, that is the load angle. So, as the load increases, the synchronizing power decreases, and so we can conclude one more point that as the load increases, the synchronism of the machine detracts. And at 90 degree, uh, the, when the load angle is 90 degree, the synchronizing power, there is no synchronizing power at that time. And it is on the verge of instability. And at that point, if the rotor 
is given a more shift towards uh, 90 degree at that point or we can say that if the load is increased beyond 90 degree at that point the motor will stop if it is not having the damper windings uh, and motor will not continue to run as synchronous machine and it will tend to stop but in this thing one more thing comes if the motor is uh, accompanied with the induction motor type uh, damper winding in that point the damper winding will continue to run the motor run the synchronous machine in, as just like an uh, induction motor and the top will burn the, them will try to make it the load angle below 90 degrees such that the, it will continue to work in synchronism and that is called the synchronous power.